critical appraisal of a book, play, or film. So where the fuck are video g- Hey look, it's me. It's a totally reliable content commercial. <laughs> YouTuber here. And before today's video starts, I would just like to give a massive thank you to everybody who showed me all the support on my last video I did in the style. It really means a lot to me that people have a legitimate interest in seeing my channel take a turn into commentary. <laughs> So once again, thank you guys so much. So for those of you who don't know what a review is, did you not just pay attention? If you want me to put it into a more blunt term, a review is just an in-depth way to express your opinion over a certain thing and whether you felt positively about what you reviewed, I think I peed a little, or if it made you want to die. Wait, what did I just say? Oh no. <laughs> Shut up, John, that's my part. Okay. Subjectivity versus objectivity, a debate as long as time itself. In short, both terms are very blurry. Generally speaking, subjectivity means that you're expressing your opinion or in declaring if you like something or not. Objectivity means that you're judging something based on its merits, depending on certain standards. Pretty clear, no questions, nobody's ever going to debate over this, there will be no questions taken or answers given. The more interesting question is if your opinion can be wrong. The answer is yes, opinions can be absolutely wrong. Let's take the final fight of The Last Jedi, for example. If someone says, I love the final fight because it was so consistent, they would be wrong. They wouldn't be wrong about loving the fight, but they would be wrong about the reason. The last fight of TLJ is filled with editing errors, choreography errors, and vanishing weapons. It is not consistent, it's very much inconsistent. So if you like the fight because it's consistent, your opinion is wrong. Your opinion should always be based on what is actually shown on screen and not what you feel that has been shown on screen. Are there situations where opinions can be wrong? Yes, if you like or dislike a movie, for example because it's length, then there is really nothing you can say. If you wish for something to be short or longer, that's your opinion, man. More nuanced though, you can like or dislike a movie if the plot introduces too many characters in a short period of time, making it harder to follow who is important to the story. All of this is not blurry at all and nobody's ever going to fight over what words mean. TLDR, yes, your opinion can be wrong if they are based on something that is factually incorrect. Okay, where was I again? Oh yeah, and that could be with stuff like literature, such as with books and novels. All the way to more primitive shit like movies, gaming, and music. <laughs> now before I get into this myself, I am not really a reviewer. <laughs> Who could have guessed that? <laughs> I have done reviews in the past, stuff like the Time Crisis games, which is the two movie reviews, a review of a music album, and lastly to a large marathon video where I took a look at all the Star Wars games that I've played over the years, which I still have to make a second part of. Okay, why don't you just piss off? You don't know how busy my life is. And what I can take away from all these reviews? They're kind of shit. Okay, the music review one was pretty funny, but you gotta take this into consideration. Back then, I didn't even really try and script any of my videos, and I thought I was capable of doing reviews like that. Fuck, I was a dumbass. <laughs> Yeah, he's kind of a dumbass. <laughs> ah, shit. Oh my word, the channel with the freakishly long name. This guy is stupid. He is so dumb. Skip it up and that up. Yeah, I do agree. You're a dumbass, mate. Sorry. Also, when are you going to pay me? I mean, you promised me to pay me like, I don't know. Pay me or else I'll dox your ass. John. You fucking dumbass. Okay, Boomer. Hey, it's Bird with a low quality voiceover to match the low quality content put out by ya. Just, uh, here to say, your feet stink. Go fuck yourself. Yo, Def. So more often than not, I completely lose track of what I was saying and not make any sense as a result. So calling them reviews would honestly be stretching it a bit. I think calling them the verbal analogy of a train derailing and falling off a bridge seems to be way more fitting. Even with that, I do think that I have more than a good enough idea on how to do reviews. <laughs> Binge watching Cat Icarus has taught me more than any school will ever be capable of. <laughs> So I feel that I should take it upon myself to teach you guys all how to do reviews, because I'm obviously the most capable person to do this. So sit back, sew your mouth shut with a rusty needle and listen, as I enlighten you all on how to do reviews. Just know this video might not help at all, so okay. Step 1. 
Identifying the type of media you want to do reviews on. As I have previously mentioned, there are a multitude of things that you can do reviews on, but the pool of what you can criticize stretches much further than the stuff I've mentioned. Hell, some losers even review food. Their lives must suck. But we would be here all day if I was to talk about every single thing that you could critique. Shit, you can even review the way how somebody breathes. Don't do that! So I think I'm just gonna condense it to three main types of media. And when I say that, I am just gonna briefly mention two of them and primarily focus on one of them. Because here at the channel with the freakishly long name, we do indeed pick favorites! And the three I'm referring to are what media probably focuses the most on. And that is music, movies, and the most unholy mediums of them all. Only fa- I, I, I meant video game. But just to, like in my last video, Go watch that, by the way, it sucks. The type of media that you want to focus on when you do reviews should be the ones that you find yourself the most associated with. Seeing as I am a douchebag at heart, obviously I cater more to video games. But gaming primarily contains everything a movie and music contain all in one package, and as a result, reviewing games are far more complicated than a movie or music album. Not that I'm saying that it's easier to review movies or albums, but it is! It's just that in reality, there's much more that goes into developing a game, so obviously there are more things that have to be criticized. And what is it that we need to criticize? Size? I'll just keep watching, asshole. I'll get there in a second. <laughs> Step two identifying the elements of what you are reviewing. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I'm keeping this in here anyway. Now that you know what you want to start reviewing, you need to know what you need to be looking for and what to criticize. Discombobulate. I'm going to primarily be focusing on video games, as previously mentioned, as they contain the same elements that you will find in a movie, like acting, choreography, dialogue, you get the gist of it. And also the same thing with music, like instruments and mixing and all that other stuff I don't care about. But seeing that video games are obviously much better... <laughs> Why you have to be mad? There's more to gaming than just that. You actually get to play the thing. I get f cool. So obviously there are other factors that are in play. Stuff like the level design, how the thing is structured, is it easy to navigate through and not be confusing to anybody who just wants to pick up and play the game based off their interest in gaming, whether they be casuals or hardcore. There's the actual gameplay. Are the controls responsive? Do the buttons do what they're supposed to do when they are pressed or do they not? Here's an example if controls are at peak of perfection. There's the game's actual presentation, though this can also be applied to movies, so please keep that in mind. And this can again be varied based off of your preference in video game presentation. You want beautifully artistic games that are pieces of interactive art that you can stare at for hours upon hours without even needing to play the thing. Well, if you're gonna do that, then why the fuck are you even playing a video game in the first place? Let your ass and go outside to a museum for once. It's very interesting and you'll regret it. Or do you prefer games like this? Yes. And those are just a few things that you have to take into consideration when you're busy reviewing a video game. There's obviously a lot more that I can go into, but I don't want this video to be longer than five minutes, so I'm gonna have to cut this show. Oh, no! Step three. Writing your review. You type shit. <laughs> Step four. Finish what you wanna review. Hey. How is this game? Oh, hell yeah, dude. This game is a 10 out of 10. Oh, that's great to hear, dude, but um, how long have you been playing? Five minutes. Well, how long is the game? Five hours. You do know I'm gonna have to kill you for this, right? Uh-huh. This is in all honesty the last thing that you should be doing if you want to review anything. And I've also seen this happen one too many times where I've seen someone put a review out on something without finishing the thing that they are trying to review. It's sad, honestly. The problem with this is that Obviously, how the hell can you form a valid opinion of the media that you're trying to review without necessarily finishing the thing and getting the full experience? I revert back to video games as an example. <laughs> Who could have seen that? You maybe play the first two hours of like Dark Souls or something and you find it incredibly easy. First off, you're cheating if you think that. And secondly, you think you've seen everything that the game has to offer within that time frame and you tell people that the game is incredibly easy based off of what you play. Once they buy it, the game is one of the hardest things of all time after giving it about five hours of their time. Congratulations, my friend, you've committed false advertisement. Behind these curtains lie your prize. A big fuck you. 
Another example may be you get a game that you are giddy to play for a while now. That's, let's say, 10 hours in length. You play the thing for the first four hours, and it's one of the best things that you've ever experienced. You put the review out, singing its praises, you come back to the thing and try to finish it, and the final six hours are the most infuriating things that you've ever had the displeasure of playing. But now you've done fucked yourself, because now you've told countless amounts of people how awesome the game is, and now you can't go back on your word, because that makes you look like the biggest hypocrite. Oh well, that's your own fault, buddy. Now listen, I do indeed understand that there are a lot of games that ask a lot of investment from the player's part. So I can understand if you don't want to go in-depth with whatever it is you're playing, but it's completely wrong to label it as a review. A review should only be applied to something that you have finished, otherwise it just ultimately turns into the preview or first impressions. You don't really need to 100% the thing. Let's just say, for example, you've only finished the main story, just review the game based off of the main story, and if there are other elements of the game that needs to be highlighted, just link the viewers to somebody who has done that. So yeah. FINISH YOUR SHIT! STEP 5 don't be a biased prick. So I'd like to say, to conclude this video, I want to touch on another topic that is very important to keep in mind when doing reviews. Now, I'm quite aware that in a lot of cases, being biased is something that is inevitable. But if bias drives your review, you might as well stop even trying to attempt to do any form of one. Now, if you guys don't know what I'm getting on about, let me first explain what the definition of bias is. Bias is inclination or prejudice for or against one person or a group, or in this case, media, especially in a way that is considered to be unfair. Now, examples for this could be in a certain franchise that you loved for ages. An example that I'm going to bring up is the Spyro and Crash Bandicoot franchise. Iconic franchises that have no doubt produced some of the best games of all time, and if you're talking about their original incarnations, then yeah, I could definitely understand how some bias could be formed. Hell, I love these games so much that I myself fall under this category. Though these games, even back then, have had their faults as little as there were. And people with the most extreme bias will never acknowledge these. Now, I bring up Crash and Spyro specifically, because if you guys know anything about the history of these games, then you will know that these franchises haven't always been capable of maintaining the exact same amount of quality as their predecessors after the original teams that have developed them moved over to new projects. Enter Crash Bandicoot, The Wrath of Cortex, and Spyro, Enter the Dragonfly, the next-gen installment to these legendary franchises. That if you just look at them side to side, you can definitely notice a very huge difference in quality just by actually looking at them. Now, going back onto what I've mentioned about the bias stuff, some fans of these franchises will still look back at these games and still highly recommend them despite the obvious flaws. And if a person was to review these games with that kind of mindset, they are immediately not taking into consideration the outside perspective of the person that they're trying to sell the product to. Another good example is if corporations give you the product free of charge for the sake of a review, or whether or not they give you money to say that the product is good despite the fact that it is not. Though that basically sounds like extortion, so take that as you will. Now, this isn't going to be something that smaller reviewers have to worry about, seeing that as getting review codes for games isn't really going to be a reality this early on. Though, who am I to say that? And that is why, more often than not, it's better to watch smaller reviewers online than having a look at larger review sources like IGN and GameSpot. Mm, fucking GameSpot! <laughs> seeing that smaller creators have more of an unbiased opinion towards what they're reviewing, seeing that they had to go out and spend physical money to obtain the product. But yeah, bias is something to look out for when you do any form of review. Okay, video's done, Bye bye I am done. So it's been pretty much a long ass time since I've done a video like this. Three months to be exact. I'm really sorry. But any case, this is my view on how I believe a person should approach anything whenever you want to do reviews. Now, like I've said, I'm not a reviewer. These are just the ways how I see that it needs to be done. So, uh, obviously, I need to give a huge shout out to the dude that joined me on this video, Carl Lucas. His videos will be in the description below. If you want somebody that can actually do reviews, then go ahead and take a look at his channel down below. And I need to give another massive shout out for the segment where everyone was giving me crap for the second time. Their channels will also be linked in the description below. So, a lot of stuff has happened since the Scribble.io video we've done a while ago and that is because I have been streaming on Twitch. So if you guys want to follow me, if you guys want to see me live, uh, seeing that I don't stream on YouTube anymore, my Twitch will also be linked in the description. And obviously, with this video topic in mind, I want to hear people tell me their opinions on this in the uh, in the comment section below, because obviously there's a lot of things that I haven't done right. Mainly the part where I'm talking about the elements, I could have went a little bit into more detail, talking about shit like glitches and stuff, but this is just, it's just a brief summary. It's just a brief summary to uh, help people get started if they want to start doing reviews. And I cannot stress this enough, if you want to do a review, please finish what the fuck ever you're reviewing, because if you don't do that, it doesn't, at least for me, it doesn't count as a review. No matter how much you may think you might know about the product that you are reviewing. But, uh, yeah. 
that's it. If you guys want to give me criticisms, then the comment section is down below. Uh, I have been John from the channel with a freakishly long name. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. And once again, I can't help stress enough. Uh, go and follow and subscribe to everybody that is in the description below. And I will see you guys in the next video.